Hey guys, it's Saga, and in this video, I'm going to compare the cameras on the iPhone 13 with the ones on the iPhone 15 Pro. I know this might sound like a bit unfair comparison to some of you guys, but a few of my friends are looking to make the switch from their iPhone 13 to the 15 Pro, and they want to know how much of an improvement, if any, they are going to get in the camera department. A few of you also asked for this specific video in the comment section, so I hope this video will be helpful for people who are looking to upgrade. Before we get to the image and video samples, let us check out the cameras that we are working with iPhone 13 gets dual 12 megapixel cameras on its back. Primary one gets f1.6 aperture, 26mm lens and sensor stabilization. Secondary camera gets f2.4 aperture and a 13mm ultra wide angle lens. iPhone 15 Pro gets three cameras and a LiDAR sensor on its back. The main camera gets a huge 48 megapixel sensor with f1.78 aperture, 24mm lens and sensor stabilization. Second camera gets a 12 megapixel sensor with f2.2 aperture, 13mm lens and autofocusing capabilities which lets it shoot macro shots. And a third and final camera gets another 12 megapixel sensor with f2.8 aperture and this one gets a 77mm or a 3x optical zoom lens with optical image stabilization. At the front, both of them get 12 megapixel sensors with 23mm lens but along with autofocus, the 15 Pro also gets a hair wider aperture of f1.9 compared to the f2.2 on the iPhone 13. With the specifications taken care of, let us start this comparison by checking out the images from their main cameras during the bright daytime. As you would expect, one of these images is shot with the iPhone 13 while the other one with the iPhone 15 Pro. But I am sure right away, no one can say that one is much better than the other. I think this in itself says a lot about the iPhone 13's camera. There is a slight difference in the way they capture colors and color temperature, but you have to be very consciously looking for that little change. If you look closer, you will see that the images from the iPhone 15 Pro are a bit sharper. Well, that is because the 13 gets a 12 megapixel sensor, whereas the iPhone 15 Pro captures 24 megapixel bend shots with its 48 megapixel main image sensor. Now, I don't know how many of you noticed this while looking at the images so far, but the main camera on the iPhone 15 Pro gets a 2mm wider lens compared to the iPhone 13. The difference is little, but this means that the 15 Pro captures a slightly wider scene. There are a bit of cooler tones in the shots on the iPhone 13, while the iPhone 15 Pro is capturing warmth in its shots. If I am not mistaken, it was the other way around when I compared the cameras on the iPhone 13 with the 14 Pro. Don't get me wrong, 15 Pro is capturing the warmth in the shots which was actually there while I was taking these images. And for that reason, I would say it is the one which is capturing more accurate looking colors out of the two in these conditions. Coming to the HDR shots, it's no secret that Apple has messed up the HDR mode on the iPhone since the last 2 or 3 years. But this year with the iPhone 15 series, they have made things so much better. You can see the difference in the HDR mode yourself. Now, I haven't tapped on any part of these images, just pointed both the cameras towards this scene and these are the results. iPhone 13 completely blew up the sky while the iPhone 15 Pro did so much better. Same in this next set of images. 15 Pro properly exposed the sky and even made the colors of the tree look much better and as it was. Whereas for some reason, it looks completely faded in the image from the iPhone 13. Now in some of the shots like we saw before, the difference between the dynamic range in their images is huge. While in others like this one, it's a bit subtle. The shadows are lifted a bit more in the shots on the iPhone 15 Pro and the brighter sun is also more evenly exposed and the color in its images also look better. But looking at these shots side by side and not zooming in, the overall shot from the iPhone 13 also looks really good. Now as I touched this point before, the overall colors in these outdoor shots look slightly warmer in the images from the iPhone 15 Pro while they seem a bit cooler in the shots from the iPhone 13. I took these images in bright sunny lighting conditions so it was really hot out there. And I think we can feel a bit of that when we look at the images from the iPhone 15 Pro. iPhone 13's images on the other hand don't remind me of that heat which I felt while taking these images. So for the outdoor shots, I prefer colors from the iPhone 15 Pro. Don't get me wrong, 13 is also capturing very good looking colors and its images look fresh and good. It's just that I prefer the shots from the iPhone 15 Pro as it takes me back right to the day when I took these images. For someone who wasn't with me while I was taking these images, they can choose either of these images as it is just a matter of your color preference. In most of the indoor or artificially lit shots, both these phones capture almost identical colors. While the colors and overall shots from the iPhone 15 Pro look a bit more brighter or lively, I think the difference is not that much to choose one over the other based on the colors in the indoor lighting conditions. If we talk about details and sharpness, then yes, the iPhone 15 Pro is the winner. But you will have to zoom in on these images to see that difference. Before we move on to the close-up shots, here's a quick word from this video's sponsor, Buckle & Bang. They are a UK-based company who designs and produces luxury accessories for your tech products. You might have seen us talk about the Apple Watch bands in some of our previous videos, but now they even offer these amazing full-grain leather cases for your iPhone. These cases look amazing on your iPhone, fit them perfectly and provide a great level of protection. There is a raised lip at the front and back, so the display and the camera lenses always stay protected. All four corners have a lot of protection and the buttons are made out of metal which makes these cases feel even more premium. 
There is soft leather on the inside which makes sure that the back glass of your phone doesn't gather any scratches and these cases have MagSafe magnets built in so you can use it with any of the MagSafe accessories that you might have. To check out the entire collection of the cases and other accessories that they offer, head over to the Buckle and Bands website from the link in the description section. I'm sure they have something for everyone. For the close-up shots, I love how the huge sensor on the iPhone 15 Pro makes the out-of-focus background look all creamy. But at the same time, I prefer the minimum focusing distance from the iPhone 13. You can get much more closer to your subject on the iPhone 13, but on the 15 Pro, you will always have to be a few inches further back for the main camera to set the focus. If you guys remember, this was much worse on the iPhone 14 Pro and I am glad that Apple has tried to make it slightly better on the 15 Pro series. And now you also get the 1.2x and 1.5x digital zoom option which might even make these close-up shots look like they have been captured from the same distance as the iPhone 13. That being said, I would still pick up the iPhone 13 for taking all of my close-up shots. It is just easier to point your camera towards the subject and not worry about the focus or hitting the 1.2 or 1.5x button. The iPhone 15 Pro does make up for this by letting you get extremely close to your subject for taking macro shots with the ultra wide angle lens. These macro shots look incredibly detailed. But remember, since the ultra wide angle camera doesn't have OIS, you will have to be very steady with your hands to take some nice macro shots. The iPhone 13 just can't take these kind of images. So if you are into macro photography, you will really love the iPhone 15 Pro. The wide lens on the 15 Pro can focus up close and take macro shots, but as the name suggests, the wide lens will let you take wide shots as well. This lens lets you capture a much wider field of view and get a lot more in the frame of your shot than what you typically can with a 24 or 26mm main camera on your phone. Thankfully, the iPhone 13 has this camera as well and as you can see, here are how the wide shots from both these phones look like. Just like for the main cameras, we see a difference in the color balance of these two shots. 13 is still capturing cooler looking colors while the iPhone 15 Pro is capturing the actual warmth of the scene. While the wide shots on the iPhone 15 Pro are a bit sharper, you honestly can't tell that when you look at the images side by side from this far. So no matter the size of the image sensor and the new image processing pipeline on the 15 Pro, I would say the wide shots from both the phones look almost identical at least during the daytime. We will look at the low light wide shots a bit later in the video. The 15 Pro gets 3 cameras and the third one is a telephoto lens. iPhone 13 doesn't get a dedicated telephoto lens but it can still shoot digitally zoomed in shots. Here is a 3x digitally zoomed in shot from the main camera of the iPhone 13 compared against the 3x optical zoom shot from the iPhone 15 Pro. There is obviously a lot more detail in the 15 Pro's image. Everything in its shot looks cleaner and clearer and there is also a lot less visible noise. There is just no way that digital zoom on the iPhone 13 or any other phone for that matter could compete with the optical zoom lens. So if you think you need to take zoomed in shots very often, then switching to the iPhone 15 Pro will help you a lot. Now the main camera on the iPhone 15 Pro can take 48 megapixel shots as well. And as you would expect, they have a lot more details compared to the 12 megapixel shots on the iPhone 13. But just like I have always shown, you will have to zoom in 4 to 5 times at the very least to see those extra details. These extra details come in very handy when you are capturing some landscape or architecture as that is when you would want to capture every minute detail if you ever want to zoom in on a particular part of the shot. 12 megapixel shots on the iPhone 13 also hold on to a lot of details. And if you think you don't zoom in a lot on your images, then it will help you take good shots as well. Even on the iPhone 15 Pro, I would suggest you guys to stick to the default 24 megapixel mode for most of your shots as those images have incredible details as well and those default images are much smaller in terms of file size compared to the 48 megapixel shots. I love taking portrait shots with my phone. Whenever I have people in the shot, I just move on to the portrait mode because I think those images look much better. I don't think I am alone because on the entire iPhone 15 series, Apple has enabled something called auto portrait mode. What this mode does is, as soon as it detects a face in the frame, it starts capturing depth information as well. And if you want, you can go ahead and make this a portrait shot with just a couple of taps. This works with your pets as well and it also captures the depth information whenever you tap to focus on a particular part of the scene. This might sound like a small feature but it comes in very handy for my photography style. So coming to the actual portrait shots. While the iPhone 13 does a pretty good job with these type of shots, the edge detection on the iPhone 15 Pro is on a whole new level. The shots look good from both the phones at first but if we take a closer look, the edge detection around the hair is completely messed up on the iPhone 13 while the iPhone 15 Pro did a near perfect job. It's not just the edge detection. 15 Pro also makes the overall colors and skin tones look much more closer to how I could see them with my own eyes. In some of the shots, iPhone 13 tries to make the face and skin tones appear a bit brighter while the iPhone 15 Pro captures the true colors. Now I know some people might prefer the look of the portraits on the iPhone 13 as it makes the face appear slightly brighter and that is completely fine. But if you want the phone which captures true to life colors then the 15 Pro is still doing a good job at it. iPhone 13 also takes a few milliseconds extra to detect the edges compared to the iPhone 15 Pro. Don't get me wrong. Portrait mode on the iPhone 13 is not slow by any means, 
it's just that the 15 Pro is even faster, so the 13 feels a hair slower in comparison. You would never even notice this if you are clicking your shots just with the iPhone 13. And as you would expect, when the situation demands better dynamic range, iPhone 15 Pro captures a much better shot. You can see, sky in the background and a few other elements are completely blown out in the portraits on the iPhone 13, but the iPhone 15 Pro has exposed everything perfectly. 15 Pro has another advantage that it will let you take 2x and 3x zoomed in portrait shots as well, which when you have good lighting conditions and enough space to move back can end up looking amazing. Whenever someone takes a portrait shot with a DSLR camera, they usually switch to a 85mm prime lens and the 3x lens on the iPhone 15 Pro provides that look for your portrait shots, making them look even better. Both the phones can take portraits of objects as well and when you get the composition and framing right, these shots from both the phones can look amazing iPhone 13's architecture gets a lot better when we are trying to take portraits of objects. 15 Pro also gets a LiDAR sensor which will help it detect the edges faster for all of these portrait shots. Now while the architecture for these portrait shots might look almost same from both the phones, I think the colors in the ones from the iPhone 15 Pro look much richer in comparison. With that, we come to the images which are taken artificial and lower lighting conditions. Most of the modern day smartphones are capable of taking some really good images in artificial and low light. This is mostly thanks to their comparatively bigger image sensor and optical image stabilization. What this does is helps the image sensor capture more light and information in these conditions. At a first look, these images seem to have same amount of information and details. But if we zoom in even a bit, you can clearly see iPhone 15 Pro's images having more details and much lower noise. It even handles the lights and color balance slightly better. As I zoom in on this shot, you can barely read what is written on the sign on the iPhone 13's image, but the text is much sharper with less noise in the image from the iPhone 15 Pro. These are the exact same lighting conditions, yet we see the iPhone 15 Pro doing much better here. This is true for all of the artificial and low light shots. The shots might look somewhat similar from both of them, but as soon as you zoom in even a bit, you can see how quickly the iPhone 13's images start falling apart and how much more details the iPhone 15 Pro manages to capture in its images. As we get to even lower light, the bigger image sensor on the iPhone 15 Pro starts taking even better looking images. In some of the shots, the 13's images might appear slightly brighter but you can clearly see it has not captured nearly as many details as the iPhone 15 Pro. And even in these situations, the 15 Pro manages to keep the noise levels to a minimum. Now I know, some of these things just don't matter to a few people and they don't even zoom in on any of their shots. For them, the iPhone 13 seems to be doing a very good job and if you have one, you can stick to it for at least another year if not more. Now in the keynote, Apple said that they tried to take care of the lens flare issue which we had seen on the iPhone since the last 3 or 4 years. When they said this, they were not talking about this ghosting lights that we see in some of the images if we have the light source directly somewhere in the frame. Well, I think this problem has been reduced a bit as well, but it is still very much present. Apple was actually talking about this kind of lens flare. The kind that you see when you have a big light source somewhere in the frame or just outside it. There was a street light just outside the frame on the right side and you can clearly see the flare it caused around the shot from the iPhone 13. The same street light was still there when I took the shot from the iPhone 15 Pro and as you can see, it didn't let that get in the shot. So yes, the new lens coating on the iPhone 15 series is working as intended to reduce the lens flare. Now the iPhone 15 Pro is not as keen on switching to the night mode as the iPhone 13. For this shot, iPhone 13 took a 2 second exposure night mode shot, while the iPhone 15 Pro didn't even fire the night mode, but we can still see the image from the iPhone 15 Pro being a bit sharper. For this shot, both of them fired the night mode and their images have a lot of details. I would say the iPhone 13 captured actual colors of the scene this time, while the iPhone 15 Pro tried to cool the shot for some reason. As we get to even lower light, the night mode on both the phones can help them capture amazing images. But there is a slight difference in the way they capture these shots. iPhone 13 took a good 4 plus second exposure time to capture this shot, while the iPhone 15 Pro took just 1 second to capture the same amount of details. In fact, if we look closer, the 15 Pro has captured more details and less noise in just 1 second. While these night mode shots look amazing, I think it takes a long time to capture the shot. And most people don't even have the patience to hold their phones steady for that long, so their shots end up looking blurry. So I think any phone that captures night mode shots faster is definitely the better one, which in this case is the iPhone 15 Pro. Wide lens on both the phones get night mode as well and as you can clearly see, shots on the iPhone 15 Pro are much sharper and have less noise comparatively. I still won't shift to the wide lens on the iPhone 15 Pro once the light gets down. I prefer sticking to the main camera for all of my shots after the sun has set, because no matter the lighting conditions, it is the lens which is taking much better looking images. With that, we come to the front facing cameras. Both of them get 12 megapixel sensors behind the selfie camera, but the sensor on the iPhone 15 Pro is bigger and has a wider aperture now. It is also backed by a newer and better image processing algorithm, which results in its selfies being much sharper and detailed. That being said, I'm not really sure if it's the best thing. I mean, I'm glad that the 15 Pro takes sharper selfies, 
but looking at these images side by side, I am wondering if I really want a front facing camera which shows every small pore and freckle on my face, I am not really sure about this. Skin tones and colors are much more accurate from the iPhone 15 Pro again, while the iPhone 13 makes the faces appear a bit brighter, which when I again think about it, might be something that a few people prefer, at least here in India. So you guys look at these selfies and figure out which one looks better to you. Here's a video from the front facing camera of the iPhone 13 and the iPhone 15 Pro. You can see how both these phones are handling the overall colors of the scene, exposure and stabilization when I'm walking around with them. There is a waterfall or fountain next to me, so it might be making a bit of noise. You guys let me know in the comments, which one do you think is picking my voice better? For shooting videos, all the resolution and frame rate options are similar on both the phones and to be fair, these videos look almost identical at least in terms of details. Colors again are a bit warmer from the iPhone 15 Pro which is how it was during the golden hour when I took these videos. So again, color wise I prefer the iPhone 15 Pro. I enjoy taking videos with both these phones and if you are a casual photographer, you will have a great time with either of them. But if you are serious about shooting videos with your phone, then the 15 Pro does things slightly better. First of all, thanks to the bigger image sensor, the background in some of the videos gets blurred out a bit more making the video stand out. And then it even captures better dynamic range and slightly better contrast which makes it feel like its videos has a bit more depth in them. iPhone 15 Pro takes more detailed videos from its wide lens. Thankfully, all the cameras on the iPhone 13 can capture 4K 60fps videos, so resolution wise, both the phones are on even grounds. While the iPhone 13 can shoot 4K 60fps videos with all its cameras, you cannot switch between the lenses while shooting at this resolution, while you can go from wide to normal to telephoto lens while shooting 4K 60fps videos on the iPhone 15 Pro. So that is one of the things which separates these two. If you are shooting at 4K 60fps resolution on the iPhone 13, you will have to choose the lens that you want to shoot with before you start recording. 15 Pro has a telephoto lens and gets macro shooting abilities, so it can even take videos in these modes which the iPhone 13 just can't. So those were all of the images and videos which I had for you guys, and frankly, I am really surprised with the results of this camera comparison. There were some areas where the iPhone 15 Pro clearly came on top, like it captures much better dynamic range, there are a ton of details in its 24 and 48 megapixel shots, and its low light performance is clearly a step above. But in most of the other everyday conditions, do you really think the difference was easily visible? While cameras on the iPhone 15 Pro are clearly better and they also give you more features, I think for most of the average users, cameras on the iPhone 13 are still performing really well. And someone who knows how to use the light to their advantage and understands composition could still take amazing shots with the iPhone 13. If you are looking to make the upgrade from the 13 to 15 Pro, then you should know that yes, you are getting an upgraded set of cameras and your images and videos will definitely turn out better in most lighting conditions. But for those who are on fence about upgrading from the 13 and thinking if it is really worth spending your hard earned money on the 15 Pro, I would say you should keep on using your iPhone 13 for another year at the very least and look at what Apple brings out next year and then think about making the switch. After looking at all these images, I am curious to know what do you guys think about the cameras on both these phones and if you had the money to go for either of them, which one would you pick and why? Please let me know in the comments. That is it for this video guys. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel for a lot more quality tech videos like this. You can also check out some of the other videos from this channel. This has been Saga and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.